Hello, welcome back to the channel and this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. We generally like to talk a lot of bollocks, tabletop gaming in general. And in this video we're going to be talking about a card game, we're going to be talking about Cat in the Box. And in this game you'll be selecting a card from your hand, you'll be placing it on the table, deciding which colour it is, and you'll be making predictions as to how many tricks you will win that will give you points that will allow you to win the game. So in this video we're going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules to be telling you what we do like what we don't like and we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not cat in a box is worth your time and bother today and in the future so remember if you're new here and please consider subscribing to this channel with the like button and wet youtube bullshit we'll see you after this bollocks so Cat in a Box is like a prediction type game. There's also a card game where you'll be playing cards on your hand to maximise the amount of points you're going to get, right? Each player is going to get a player board and some tokens. You're going to slot the research cards into the main board, right? You'll see that each square will have a number associated with it, right? Depending on the number of players, you'll deal a number of cards to all the players, right? And the first thing you're going to do is select a card from your hand and you'll put it face down in front of you. Then everybody will predict how many tricks they think they are going to win in this round. Yeah? and you will place a player token on the predicted number of tricks on your player board. So once you've done that, you'll move on to the trick phase. Start with the first player. You will choose a card from your hand and in clockwise order, all the other players will do the same. Yeah. If you play a cat card from your hand, you will have to declare what colour the cat card represents and you will place that card alongside the colour you declared on your player board. So if you declared yellow, you'll place it on the yellow side of the board. You fickle saying, there's two rules to this, right? So get them into your fucking head. On the row of the colour you declared, the number space must be empty. There can't be another token in it and you must have a player token on the X space. So if you've already used that colour, you ain't going to be able to use it again, are you, right? Ficko. The start player cannot declare red because that is the trump card right and the color they declare is known as the lead color or maybe it's the led color i have no idea players who play a card after the start player may declare any color that they bloody well like yeah as long as it satisfies rule one and rule two once everyone's done this then you will see who's won the trick the player who played the strongest card will take the trick so you're probably asking how do you decide which is the strongest card well i'm going to tell you right now if red is declared in addition to the led color then red is the trump card so it's going to be stronger than the led color right if blue yellow or green are declared in addition to the lead color the lead color is stronger than the other colors right and then you compare the remaining cards and then the card with the highest number is going to be the strongest card right so there's also the chance of a paradox occurring in this game yeah a paradox is if you cannot declare and observe any card in your hand according to the two rules we described earlier and if this happens you will stop the round immediately and the player that calls the paradox reveals a hand and proves that a paradox has occurred and that no player will win that trick that turn right so once you've done all the shit then you will move on to the scoring phase you'll get one point for each trick that you have won and if you cause the paradox the player who caused a paradox instead scores minus one point for every trick that they won and then you'll get some points for accurately predicting how many tricks you're going to win you'll play a number of rounds equal to the number of players and then the player who has the most points at the end of the game will be the winner of cat in a box here yeah? so what do we like about cat in a box so the first thing that we really like about this game is that the presentation is like a 10 out of 10, yeah? It's based on a really cheap Japanese game. I think Bezier Games have tried to keep the overall feel of that game intact, yeah? This game comes with indented boards, yeah? It didn't have to do that. It could have just scrimped on that and given you a load of shit with glossy pieces of paper like terraforming Mars, but it didn't do that. None of the cubes or scoring tokens are going to be rolling around anywhere, and that is good to see. The cardboard's really thick. And yeah, the overall presentation of this game is pretty damn good, right? So next thing that we really like about Cat in a Box is that Bezier Games have done really well trying to mirror the mechanics with the theme, right? This theme is based on a scientific principle called Schrodinger's Cat, where basically it's some crazy principle with quantum mechanics that an animate object can be both dead and alive at the same time until it is observed, right? And I've tried really hard to do this. You're going to make some scientific predictions. You're going to be influencing the flow of events by declaring different numbers to be representative of different colors right so like in a scientific experiment you're going to be manipulating physics to prove a hypothesis even the rule book reads like a sort of text but they got some things scribbled out when it mentions experiment then it scribbled out and says game yes i've done really well with that so you can't really knock the designers for attempting to inject as much theme into this game as a glaswegian junkie would heroin so the final thing that we really like about kind of box is the novel mechanic 
where you get to choose what each card represents yeah the deck of cards is just a bunch of cat cards with numbers on and it's up to you to dictate how the game plays out right and this gives you a fantastic grand opportunity to try and block other players yeah they might not have the cards in their hand to play the strongest card you might know that they might be holding off if you gobble up the low numbers first they're going to be forced to play their high numbers when they don't really want to when they're going to be losing the game yeah because you've got a trump card there so there is ample opportunity to stitch people up and i love games that allow you to stitch people up because i am a bona fide stitch up merchant extraordinaire don't be like but a cat in a box so the first thing you don't like about this game is that the rules are fucking shit you've got 12 pages of rules for this okay admittedly the rule book is quite tiny but that's because the box is tiny yeah but even so the way that the rules are laid out it gave me a fucking headache they have tried to mitigate the shit rules by getting a highlighter and highlighting the standout text but even so some of the really important details in this rule book use a font the size of a fucking tetsy flies penis there's even a flow diagram on the back that really i suppose is there for theme but i suppose you lot at the back thought you could actually use this stuff when the first thing that flew into my head was can I use it for toilet paper so yeah the rule book could do with a revamp you could fit the rules for this game on one sheet of paper but instead they went with a 12 page rule book which ended up making me wish that I'd got a year's supply of anodin extra last time I went to Sainsbury's so the next thing that we don't like about cat in a box is that the trick prediction phase generally yields some conservative estimates right it's fiendishly difficult to assess how many tricks you are going to win each round yeah and what we found in this game is that most people just say maybe one maybe two tricks it's very rare that people are going to stick their neck out on the guillotine block and go for a higher number and as such you're not really going to be throwing caution to the wind right there's no real incentive to go ape shit. on the flip side of this however if you've got somebody that is lagging behind towards the end of the game they're just going to push their canoe out into the middle of lake windermere and hope that they don't get caught up in a deadly storm yeah and as a result they might win the game through just some random load of bullshit so yeah the prediction phase of this game just feels like it's sort of tagged on for the sake of theme right and as such it stinks so it's cut in a box worth your time and bother today and in the future so we're going to say maybe maybe not this is an average game right it's been dressed up to look like it's got more to it than it actually does and as such this is more pavlov's dog shit than it is schrodinger's cat right busier games do get 10 out of 10 for the effort they put into the presentation and the effort that they have put in to try and merge the theme with the rules yeah but this is living proof that a game can be both good and bad at the same time until you've played the bloody thing so there you go that's cat and box remember if you're new here then please consider subscribing to this channel with the like button and all that youtube bullshit see you next time